Hi, in this video, I want to go through an example that was posted on the discussion board. It's a really good one and I really like it. So I want to go through um, all the different pieces that was talked about. Um, <clears throat> first, I want to start with, um, we need to find this constant, uh, some sort of constant that goes here so that this function f is a PDF. Okay, without this constant, um, f is not a PDF because remember the total probability must equal one or for a continuous, um, for a continuous function, uh, the total integral must equal one. So without some sort of constant there, uh, the total integral is not one, so not a PDF. Okay, it's a very important feature of probability distribution functions. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find that to make this function into a PDF. Then we're going to talk about how to find the probability x is greater than y. Then we'll talk about how to find the conditional distribution of f x given y, and then how to find the probability that x is greater than 1 half given y equals 1. Now I changed this slightly from the um, discussion board. Um, in the discussion board it said the probability x is greater than 1 uh, given y equals 1. Um, but because of the support for this distribution, um, x if x is more than one, then the um, distribution equals zero. So uh, probability x is greater than one, greater than one, well, it would just be zero. So I changed it to one half to make it um, slightly more difficult for us to find, um, you know, the answer is not just zero by looking at our support, okay? So greater than one, x being greater than one, the answer would be zero just because of the support here, okay? All right, so now we have to actually calculate this. So starting with finding the constant, let's go ahead and do that part first. Okay, so the total integral, if I integrate over x and y, I'll go ahead and do x first. So zero to one dx, and then y is zero to three dy. Okay, so cx squared y, y squared, this should equal one. Okay, I can divide both sides by C. Since C is just a constant, it comes out there. So um, go ahead and bring this over. So this is one over C, zero to three, zero to one, X squared, Y squared, DX, DY. First thing I wanna integrate over is X. So I'm gonna make this a one third X to the third power, right? Increase the power and evaluate it from zero to one. I still need my integration for y. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's go ahead and raise this up. So remember here, I just integrated for x, so this is plugging in for x, okay? So I'll plug in one, that makes this one. If I plug in zero, the whole thing zeroes out. So it's just one third y squared dy. All right, so now let's go ahead and integrate with regards to y. So I get one. Now let's see, I need to bring the power up one. So this would make this three times three, which is nine. Evaluate it from zero to three, one over c. Okay, so this then becomes one ninth, three to the third power minus zero to the third power Okay, so three to the third power is 27. 27 divided by nine is three. All right, so what is C? Flip both sides, you get C equals one over three. All right, so you need this constant to be one over three in order for this function to be a PDF. So I'll go ahead and write that here, one over three, good done that one. All right, so now let's find the probability that x is greater than y. All right, I think a great way to start actually all these joint um, distribution uh, problems is by drawing out your support. So I'm going to go ahead and write that over here. So I'm going to draw out my support over here. Okay, so I have x and y. So this is y and this is x. Okay, and then x goes from zero to 
one. One, two, three. Y goes from zero to three. So my support then is right here. Okay. So right now, um, I am trying to find, let me go ahead and write this down. So right now I'm trying to find the probability that X is greater than Y. All right, so uh, where, where is X equal to Y? Uh, X equals Y on this line here, right? So where is X, right, this is one, two, so X equals Y here. Where is X greater than Y, right? So down here, right? X is greater than Y down here. Up here, X is less than Y, right? So like if you take value one half, here's one half for Y. Down here, X is one half, but Y is less than one half, right? So X is greater than Y right here. All right, so now I want to integrate, when I do my integration, and I'm trying to find this probability, I want to integrate over this white little square, okay? So this one, I would, I would integrate. I'm going to integrate with both regards to x and y. Um, so let's see. If I integrate first with regards to, it doesn't matter which order I do it in. Um, I'll, first thing, I'll, I guess I'll integrate with regards to um, the values of y first. So y goes from 0 y goes from 0 to whatever x is, right? Because remember, this line is y equals x. That's what this line is here. OK, so y goes from 0 to x. So if I integrate it with regards to y first, let me go ahead and write dy out here. All right, so now if I'm integrating with regards to x, I've already been limited by y, so I'm going to go from 0 to 1. All right, so I'm going to have dx right here. OK. And then I'll write my function. So this is 1, my joint distribution here, um, 1 third, uh, what was it, x squared, y squared. Right. right. And the reason why I'm using the joint um, probability distribution function here um, is because this is a probability that involves both x and y. Right. If it was a probability that involved only x, I would use the marginal distribution for x. If it was a probability that involved only y, I'd use the marginal distribution for y. Since this is a probability that involves both x and y, I need to use the joint distribution for x and y. OK, so I hope. So the hardest part about this one is actually figuring out where you're, where you're trying to integrate over, figuring out your support. OK, so let's see. Now I can integrate this. This is just calculus from here on out. So I'm going to integrate first with regards to y. So I'll have 1 third y to the third power, 0 to x. OK, I still have my dx, and I still have my integration. So remember, um, this I'm plugging in for y, right? because I just integrated with regards to y. So this is actually 1 ninth, right? 1 third times 1 third is 1 ninth, x squared. So I'm going to plug in an x to the third power minus 0 to the third power, dx. OK, so I end up getting 0 to 1, 1 ninth, x to the fifth power, dx. All right, so now I need to integrate with regards to x. So I'll get 1 ninth. I need to bring this power up 1, so 6. So I'll multiply that 9 by 6, evaluate it from 0 to 1. OK, 9 times 6 is 54. Um, x to the 6th power, evaluate from 0 to 1. You plug in 0 and you plug in 1, you get 1 over 54. OK, so there we go. Our probability that um, x is more than y is 1 over 54. 
Of course, if you're finding a probability, always double check that you found the probability and that your answer is between zero and one. If your answer is not between zero and one, then you didn't find a probability, right? All probabilities are numbers between zero and one. It's a good way to just, you know, roughly make sure, oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Um, next, I'm going to, so, so that's how you do this part. So next, I want to talk about finding the conditional distribution of x given y. So let's talk about how do we find the conditional distribution of x given y. I'll do that over here. So the conditional distribution of x given y, this will be the joint distribution. Okay, so these little subscripts make it sure that you understand this f is different than this f because of these subscripts divided by the marginal distribution of y. Again, this f is different than these f's because of that little subscript. Okay, so now I need to find what is the marginal distribution of f, or marginal distribution of y. So I need to find this guy. So to find that guy, I'm gonna integrate over x, right? So I'm going to basically project this back to, onto y. So I'm going to integrate over x. x goes from 0 to 1. Um, 1 third x squared y squared integrating over x. Okay. So this would be 1 third x to the third power. So times 3 y to the squared 0 to 1. Integrate it with regards to x. So plug it add in for x. 1 ninth y squared. Okay, so this is the marginal distribution of um, f. So now I'm going to go ahead and take, take this and plug it in. So this equals 1 third x squared y squared divided by 1 ninth y squared. Notice that the y's cancel for this for this distribution, and we're left with 1 third x squared. Go ahead and flip this fraction so we don't have fraction over fraction. Make this a 3, so we're left with 3x squared. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and write this neater. So we have our conditional distribution equals 3x squared or 0 otherwise. We need to write our support. Okay? So actually, let me rewrite this. So the function f of x given y, x given y. Okay. So we need to write our support. So um, support will be the same as your support from your joint distribution. Um, you still need to write the support for y. Uh, if, if they give you, even though y is fixed, right, it's no longer random because it's been given. So um, if someone says, well, find, the, find f of x given y equals 1, well, then y equals 1, so you don't need to write this because you know y is 1, right? And you would plug in y, y equals 1 here. Actually, this one doesn't have any y, so um, you don't have to plug it in. But if someone says, well, find the con conditional distribution of x given y equals 4, well, the answer should be 0, right? Because y is still restricted between 0 and um, 3, Okay, so you still should write your support just to be clear that you still know that y has to be between 0 and 3 still. Okay, all right, so there we go. That's our conditional distribution in general for any y value. Okay, um, last part, last question I want to talk about is how to find the probability x is greater than 1 given y equals 1. Okay, so let's talk about how do we find that. So now we can use our uh, conditional distribution and we will find the probability that x is greater than 1 half given y equals 1. Okay, so given now given y equals 1, um, I would no longer need this piece because I know y equals 1, so this would 
um, the marginal distribution of x given y of x given y equals 1, which is be 3 um, x squared with, with x between 0 and 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this. So probability x is greater than 1 half, so I would go ahead and integrate from 1 half on to 1, right? Beyond 1, this is 0. So I don't need to do 1 to infinity. 1 to infinity, the, um, it would just be equal to 0. So 1 half to 1 is good. Then um, of my marginal distribution, x given y of x given y equals 1, OK, dx. So let's go ahead and plug in that marginal distribution now. So we get 3x squared dx. Now, if there was a y here, I would plug in 1 wherever where I saw a y. OK, but there's no y, so just write it like that. OK, so then this is x to the third power, or the 3's cancel when I do that integration. OK, and so I would go ahead and finish this. So I'd have 1 minus 1 eighth, right? 1 half cubed is 1 eighth. So this is 7 eighths. OK, and double check that if you're finding a probability, you got a number between 0 and 1, good. All right, so that's how you find the um, probability that x is greater than 1 half given y equals 1.